On today's Saturday news, Charlotte and Andrade are no more. Is WWE tough enough returning? The Universal title match is set up for day one. And Booker T blasts CM Punk for cheap pops on AEW. Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? Yes, my name is Phil Chambers and I'm joined by Gareth Morgan to talk all things wrestling news. But before we get into it, make sure you like the video, comment down below what you think of all of the stories, uh, subscribe to the channel and links to each, uh, each story is in the description below. Click the little time stamps and off you go. But first up, what have we got, Gary? We've got relationship drama. That is exactly why you tuned into this video today. So that's what we're going to give you. Because it's not it's a sad thing. And Salty's upset as well. Salty's, Salty's not like relationship drama. One second. So yeah, Salty does not like relationships, evidently. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, it's a sad thing. I don't know why I'm smiling. Salty I'm so, loves love. He loves love. He doesn't love. like it when it ends. He doesn't want it to, yeah, exactly. It's heartbroken, but it's one of those things. I mean, it's 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 a relationship breaking up. What more can we tell you? It's uh, Cassidy Haynes at Bodyslam.net was the first person to really just break the story and talk about it. He cited multiple sources that said that the pair had decided to call off their relationship and reportedly it was Charlotte who was the first person to say that they should call it a day pretty much she told El Idolo she wanted to stop dating a few weeks back and this is obviously on the back of well Andrade apparently unfollowing her on Instagram which is the biggest thing in the world nowadays you cannot unfollow somebody on social media because it means everything and uh, well apparently it did according to this like the reports are saying that they have broken up and it's a bit of a sad one really if that is the case I mean Charlotte and Andrade they've been together since what early 2019 they got engaged on New Year's Eve I believe of that yeah. year in 2019 and um, yeah it just seemed like they were destined to be together forever and all the good stuff and I don't know life just sometimes doesn't work out that way I don't I don't know what else to add to this. I feel like a relationship counselor and it's just a bit like, uh. but again, it's been important to say that they've, neither of them have come out and like officially said, yes, this is over. So it's not 100% like this is legit official. It has happened, but all reports are stating that this could be the fact. So I don't know. All the best to both of them because it kind of sucks as Salty has already noted. Indeed, yeah, that's all I was going to say. Like, all the best to both of them. It goes to show that you never know quite what's going on behind the scenes in people's lives and, like, pure speculation on my part, but maybe this has added something to all the rumours that have been around uh, Charlotte at the minute or something like that. If she's been going through something behind the scenes, you just never know what's going on behind the scenes in people's lives. So we wish them both the best uh, in going forward. I don't know what else to add. That's <laughs> just one um, of them, Phil. It is, indeed. Sad news. Uh, but moving on, is WWE Tough Enough, their famed reality show, making a comeback? This is coming from Fightful, uh, that they've reported that WWE have submitted a bid to trademark the term Tough Enough, and they did that on the 30th of November, which is usually a sign that WWE are looking to use that name uh, going forward. So it could be the return of Tough Enough. If it is the return, it will be the seventh season that they've done and also seven years since the last season. Um, last season we obviously got uh, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville and Velveteen Dream out of it so mixed results there. Yeah. We'll just take one of those off and keep the other two shall yeah. we? Um, neither of the winners went anywhere. Sarah Lee and Josh Bredel, I think his name was, uh, were released in 2016 and 2017 and I don't think looking back that the winners of Tough Enough have ever really had a long and storied career. We had Maven uh, who is famed for being destroyed by The Undertaker that one time. <laughs> but he was there for a couple of years and I don't think anyone else has ever really done anything. So it's had very success in actually making stars this TV show, but I do gotta say, kind of a guilty pleasure of mine, going back all the way to the very beginning, I've really liked all of the Tough Enoughs. I know they're not great, but I really, really like them for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's like car crash telly, and it's one of those things, it's very similar to the likes of the X Factor and Pop Idol, all these things where the actual winners don't tend to really stick around that long afterwards. It's more just yeah. the, the entertaining people along the way that people fall in love with and want to see more of. They yeah, tend to make something of their lives. I think was The Miz yeah. in one a couple of years ago, obviously. The Miz was the, in one, John Morrison yeah. was in one, but he didn't even make it through to the like final eight or something. I think Madness. he was just in the beginning stages. Um, but there's, yeah, there's been loads of people that have been in. The, MJF did a video for one, but didn't get selected at one point. I remember that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, aged really well. You can see his audition tape online, which is mm. quite entertaining. 
Um, but yeah, they've mixed up the format quite a lot over the years. It's changed very much from what it began as of like Al Snow just teaching people how to wrestle for a while to Stone Cold Steve Austin shouting at people when they uh, have terrible favourite matches, which is also another highlight of Tough Enough. I really like Tough Enough. I really want it to come back. I can see this. I think you should enter yourself for it, Phil. You've got some wrestling training under your belt. Why not? Have oh, a go. we should yeah. get Simon Miller to enter. Definitely. Definitely. That'd if be Tough fun. Enough comes back, we're doing a social media push to get Simon Miller on top of it. He'll win the whole damn thing. But no, we don't want him to he win because then he won't go very far. That's, that's, that's so we true, want him yeah. to go out like we want him to come like sixth, yeah. maybe. <laughs> Not even get through the first round. But yeah, speaking of firsts and number ones, that's my segue and I'm sticking to it. WWE Day 1 <laughs> has got a big main event attached to it now because Roman Reigns is going to be defending his Universal Championship again against Brock Lesnar. That is happening and you might be wondering, wait, what, what? I thought Sami Zayn was the more contender. What's happened? Well, there were some developments. Let's just call them that on SmackDown last oh, night. Oh no! How did no one see this coming? I know. Jeff Hardy died for this, Phil. This is what happened because <laughs> Sammy went down to... Well, no, he didn't actually. Brock Lesnar went down to the ring first and started cutting a promo as this new independent Brock does. And I really love independent Brock with his little, like, checkered shirt and vest and his Viking beard. He's great. And he was just talking about what we were saying to the audience. Well, you, you must be wondering how I got my suspension lifted. And then Sammy came down and he was like, I'm the number one contender. And then quickly realized that you just do not interrupt Brock Lesnar. He went very, very quick was well, south very quickly for him and they started kind of having a bit of a back and forth and brock was like hey man why not just put your title shot into tonight just do it for the main event and he was like i don't know and he's like i think you should and he was like, i don't know but i think you should and it was that kind of back and forth for a bit and brock there was a brilliant moment where brock got his arm around sammy and and <laughs> started looking up at the lights going hey kid look at this picture it now sammy Zayn, roman reigns name of the bright lights i can see this for you kid and sammy was just thinking how i'm gonna die here this is this is my night this is gonna be great and eventually he did because in the main event brock lesnar just massacred sammy before he could even get into his match with roman like he goaded him in and just destroyed him with all the suplexes all the f5s and then roman just picked the bones really speared him put him in a guillotine won the match so we are going to get Roman against Brock because that was the stipulation of the match as well. Whoever won that match against Roman would be facing Brock at day one. So that is a thing that is happening. Poor old Sami Zayn. All I can say, I've said it probably every week for the last few weeks now, is bring back the Sami Zayn documentary. He's getting screwed all the time. The conspiracy documentary needs to make it to air allow it to come out i want to see it you put so much time and effort into this just release the goddamn documentary he, he even like noted it as well last night he mentioned it at one point like bro like, he was like oh well you seem to get in all these horrible situations and he was like yes bro there was a thing there was a whole thing like throughout the year but i'm not going to go into it no go into it sammy bring go it back into it, sammy we want the documentary and i will not be happy until i see it uh, but speaking of people who are not happy, let's look at Booker T. Um, he does not like the way that CM Punk has been using Triple H to get some cheap pops uh, on Dynamite recently. Now, he was talking about it on his podcast. Uh, he was talking about Punk's promo with MJF, where he said he'd only ever become a major player in AEW if Tony Khan has a daughter and then he gets to marry her. Uh, taking shots at Triple H, obviously. Uh, but Booker T did not like this, so on his podcast he was saying things about how uh, Triple H was a bigger star than Punk even before he married Stephanie McMahon, and that's a fact. Um, and then he kind of continued to rant about how hard Triple H had worked in WCB, uh, WCW, oh I said WCPW. <laughs> I remember those head. years uh, like they were yesterday, <laughs> Phil, Triple H, WCPW uh, years. <laughs> how hard he'd worked in WCW way before he ever made it to WWE uh, and he basically thought it was a classless move from CM Punk and that he should be trying to say these things to his face and not behind someone's back and that comments like this kind of tick him off a little bit. Um, so Booker T not liking CM Punk's comments on Dynamite but personally I thought they were quite funny. So yeah. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all's fair in love and war, and this is, at this point, it is most definitely a war. And then it didn't stop WWE just going in on the segment in a way on Raw as well. And then they took shots yeah. at their own people who they released. So it's just, yeah, I don't know. I think if you're offended, you're offended. Fine, be offended. Just don't try and drag everyone else down because, I, yeah, I like this. I thought it worked. It got people's eyes on the product, and that is what we need at this point. Indeed. Uh, but let's move over to your Twitter questions to end the video. The first one comes from Jake, 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 who says, 
Do you like the incorporation of MMA into pro wrestling promotions? Well, this would be a good one for you. Yeah. You're an MMA person, aren't you? MMA guy. You like all that fake fighting? Yeah, yeah. Super fake. Yeah, all the bruises. <laughs> You've seen comments. the black eyes. <laughs> yes, hi. I'll post some pictures of your bruises and just send them to Phil. Um, yeah, I, I don't mind it. I think there's a, there's a fine line with it where if you see with people like Shayna Baszler where she, she'll just throw a bit of MMA stylings in there in terms of like a really savage knee or something or just make things look a bit more snug, which is quite, yeah, I like that when that's thrown in there. But then when you start shooting, you start trying to just grapple in the ring and there's no real choreography, let's say, to it, it seems a yeah. bit... I don't know. It, it's not as enjoyable to watch if you tune into wrestling. If you tune into an actual fight, yeah, it's great because you can tell there's two people there trying to have a physical game of chess and there's loads of things to enjoy in that. But if you're just watching two wrestlers kind of shooting but kind of not shooting, it's like semi-shooting, it, it never really clicks. It doesn't really click. I think Vince McMahon always has a bit of an issue with that. Like, I, I think he, he actually went came down pretty hard on Shayna Baszler for doing that with Natalia. I think it was in 2020, early 2020. So it's... Yeah, I don't know. There's some. T I think with strikes it works. I think it really does work. But in terms of grappling and things like that, I don't know. There's still some elements that I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, when done right, like you say, I think it's absolutely great. Like you look mm -hmm. at Ronda Rousey, you look at Brock Lesnar, obviously. Um, Shayna Baszler, like back when she was doing the run, when she was just running through people and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and the work she did in NXT, like Matt Riddle. Like there's loads of people that have mm -hmm. managed to build it into the art of pro wrestling uh, and make it work within their characters. But the thing is, I, I tune into pro wrestling for pro wrestling. I don't want to watch a shoot fight. That's not what I'm interested in. I want to watch like a good story and a good match. And that doesn't always work with shoot fights. So you, if you incorporate it all in properly and work it within a pro wrestling structure, all for it. I think it makes the people that do it stand out a little bit from the usual style and mixes of styles always makes it more more interesting matches. So I generally, I'm all for it. <laughs> Um, moving on to Eddie Zamhari, or Zamari maybe, uh, who says, with AEW having the four pillars of their own, who will be the four pillars of WWE? Right, this one's interesting because if you just want to talk about four pillars currently, like the people who are the mainstay foundation people of WWE, then you're looking at the bigger names. Like Roman the Reigns, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns. Yeah, all four of them. The the, the entire bloodline. Yeah, Roman, Roman Reigns' his arm, Roman Reigns' yeah. his other arm, Roman Reigns' his leg, Roman Reigns' his leg. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much it. And his beard. Don't forget his beard. So I think there's that way of looking at it, or the way that I think it's presented in AW, where it's the future. It's the, it's the building blocks for the future in terms of the company. I think in WWE's landscape, that's a lot harder. So <laughs> I think you've got somebody really obvious like Bron Breaker right now in NXT 2.0. I think he's a big superstar for the future. If they somehow don't find a way to fumble him in the next year or so. I think he could be something big and special. Um, I don't, and then after that, it's, it's interesting. I think you've got people like Rhea Ripley, who's quite young, could definitely be around for a long time. Bianca Belair, then you throw straight into that, that mix yeah. as well. And Damien Priest. Damien Priest, potentially. You've got people like that. It's, it's a tough one because you feel like even though people are on strong runs currently, like Damien Priest, it could all change in six months in this company. There is just no, nothing seems guaranteed apart from maybe like one or two people. So maybe Damien Priest. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else in XT 2.0 currently you could maybe throw into that mix. Zion Quinn! No, I'm sorry. That was mean. Um, <laughs> maybe Rich Holland? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's gone missing again. He does really on love Javis. <laughs> he does love... Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. I think there's three solid contenders there. I think the other ones may be open for debate. Yeah, I think, yeah, WWE don't appear to be looking to the future very much at the minute. So I reckon in their eyes, their four pillars are quite literally Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, probably Goldberg, and probably The Rock. Because let's face it, they're the only people they're really pushing at the minute. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Seth Rollins. I mean, the fact maybe. we're not mentioning the WWE champion in that conversation says everything. I, I mean, that's just, <laughs> oh, God. What a world, what a world, uh, eh? Dear, the final question of the day comes from John Harrison, who says, What do you think of the Hangman Page Championship run so far? He's not been in a match since winning the belt. He's a Page fan, but disappointed he's not being showcased as a champion. What do you think? It's terrible, isn't it? What a bad run. What an awful idea it was to put the belt on Hangman Page. Just a waste of time. No, I'm joking. It's it's been it's been what it needs to be. There's a story being told there. I think AEW have conditioned us to be we'll try and be as patient as possible with this Hangman storyline because like look how it's evolved over the last two years and how we got yeah. that massive crescendo. I think what's happening here with Hangman is that he doesn't want to lose his belt. He's worked so hard for it. I don't think he's 
going out of his way to say, no, no, I don't want any matches. Like, I, I only want to wrestle every couple of months. I don't think he's doing that at all. But equally, I don't think he's tapping on Tony Khan's door, this character, and saying, hey, I'll defend it every week because he doesn't want to yeah, risk he's not losing out it. an open challenge every week, is he? Yeah, exactly. And he's, he's not been that kind of champion that goes, I'll defend my title when I like. He's just not, he's just, he's been ignorance his bliss. He's like, la, 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 I'm enjoying yeah. my title run. Don't it's great. talk about it. Don't have to do it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's literally it. And that's the, yeah, the millennial cowboy is uh, doing his thing. And I think it's, it's brilliant brilliant because it's got us having this conversation now because Daniel Bryan's been wrestling each and every week making a point of it again the heel is wrestling every single week and the baby face isn't I love this dynamic it's just yeah this yeah. is just completely out of the ordinary and it's great yeah me too I really like it it's the whole thing of like being in school and not wanting to put your hand up or not wanting to the teacher to call on you. You're just like there staring at your desk like, la, 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 I'm fine, just getting on with things. Uh, and that's pretty much what Hangman Page seems to be doing with this one. And if, obviously, winter is coming, it's coming up pretty quickly and it's going to be him versus Brian Danielson. If Brian Danielson does beat him in his first title defence, it's going to be quite incredible. And a little part of me really, really wants that to happen. And I think Sorry, it Hangman. It'll be a great story to carry on from there, but I just think that's the most interesting thing you can do. That's definitely it. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's one of the more interesting story developments that you can have in this this tale right now, and it's something AEW haven't done to, to my best recollection they've not had somebody just stumble at the first hurdle and if there's yeah. anybody who you'd, you'd pick to do that based on the character i'm sorry hagman you're, you're the guy because we want to see you overcome the odds once again later down the line it's oh and it, it will happen a... and he'll be come back even bigger and stronger and more confident mm. than ever but yeah like you say i think it's been really interesting because it's so subtle and it, they're mm. not sort of rubbing the story in your face he is just there he comes out, he's got the belt, he cuts his promos and everything. He's not. He's there, he's sort of ready, but he's not really fighting. He's not that fighting champion. He's just keeping himself to himself. And I think that's just an interesting way of doing it. I don't, I don't remember another sort of title reign for a good guy that they've done in this kind of vein in any promotion. Mm. That's it. That's, that's what this company has prided themselves on, that they do things a little bit different. Indeed, and that is today's wrestling news. Thank you very much for joining us. If you want, you can continue the conversation over on Twitter. You can follow me at Phil My Chambers, and you can follow Gareth at GMorgan04. And you can follow all of us at What Culture WWE. Thanks again for joining us. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below what you think of all of today's stories and who your four pillars of WWE are, etc. Uh, but most importantly, Oh yeah, go watch our chase quiz that's up on the channel. I'll put a link in the boxes around here. Go watch it. It was a massive setup and it took us forever and we're really proud of it. So go watch it, please. Thank you. I cost uh, people a lot of money in this quiz, so I'm just going to keep my head yeah, down. That's you've got to watch it for how much the entire office now hates Gareth. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. But bark if you love love. Bark if you love love. Woof. Bark if you love love. Woof. Have yourselves a bloody good day. Woof. Woof. <laughs>